On two, right on the aisle. Kevin, Jeff Zog at USA Today. What are you thinking when you see the recent spate of 70-point games from individuals? And what are the circumstances or what's going to be required? Do you think someone can get 80, 90 and come close to 100 in today's game? Uh, when I see those high-scoring high games, I just um, think about the skill that has come to the league and how great some of these players really are and how great offense is going to be great defense all the time, you know. So when you watch Luka's 70-point game, it's just like he making tough shot after tough shot, you know. So I, f I definitely feel somebody can break that 80 point. 100 points would be tough to do in the game. You got to shoot almost every shot and get a lot of shots up to get to 100. But I think somebody could get his 80. Uh, standing on your left, Tim Bontemps. Or on your right. <coughs> Bond of CSPN. Kevin, for a long time, you and Steph and LeBron have sort of been the faces of the league, almost a generation now. As, as you look to this younger generation of guys coming up behind you, do you see any obvious candidate to sort of take on the mantle from you guys when you eventually are done playing? I think each area has five, six, seven guys that, like, help carry the game forward, push the game forward. Uh, much more than just Steph, LeBron, and myself. is James Harden, Russell Westbrooks, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. There's a lot of these guys who have inspired the next generations of hoopers uh, to want to be professionals. Uh, it's more than just a few guys. So I look around the league, and you see I'm going to miss a lot of guys, but you see Shea, Ant, Book, Luca. Um, Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Heilberg, there's so many guys that are inspiring the next generations of hoopers after them to become basketball players that you can't just pinpoint it to one or two guys. So it's about pushing the game forward, um, setting a different standard of how we play, and these guys are doing it right now. Nicole Cepeña from Dominican Republic. What has been the most memorable game in your entire career and why? Most memorable game? Yeah. Uh, it's a tough question. You put me on the spot. Um, if I had to say one, I would probably say game, game six, 2012, going into um, Western Conference Finals. We were up 3-2 on San Antonio, and we down 20 at the half at home, and we had to rally to get to the finals at 23 years old. That probably was something that stood out the most. Uh, Dwayne? Hold on, the microphone's right behind you here. My bad. Sorry about that. Kevin, two questions. One, um, you and Devin, A, why do you think you guys have clicked so well, um, so quickly? Why, why do you think that is? Because uh, we hang out off the floor. I think that's, that's most of the battle when you get to know your teammates that deep. You know, we almost to this point know what each other thinking, you know. So um, I hung out with them a lot since I got to Phoenix in this past summer, and we worked out, obviously, but us hanging out, playing video games, going out, having a drink, you know, all that stuff helps when you have been trying to gain chemistry as a team, and uh, it's been great getting to know him. Quick follow. Um, on the court, obviously, you guys talk quite a bit. He said that you give him confidence. What does he give you? Same thing. I mean, when you just – I mean, I don't feel like we're both confident players, but when you got that so extra support out there to just – Go do what you do. Um, sometimes you need that, especially when you're one of the lead guys on the team. You focus on so much other stuff, your teammates, scheme, strategies, you know. Um, and sometimes you need somebody to relieve you all that stuff and just tell you to go play. And I think that's what we do for one another. I, also, our coaching staff does that for us as well and our teammates. So when you got support like that, it just makes you a, a way better player. Denise, the Players' Tribune, uh, can you tell me what it actually means to be an a and for all the dogs? Um, whenever Drake just want to talk about life, I'm just there for him. And then he just gave me that title. And then quick follow-up, when's your album dropping? <laughs> I doubt I'll have an album dropping. I, get, I just do it for fun. Uh, uh, yo, Katie, right uh, if you're trying to slide into somebody's DMs, what's your line? <laughs> Where are you at? I'm right here. <laughs> Who gave this guy a mic? <laughs> Say that again. You're trying to slide in someone's DMs. What's your line? Hi. Hi? That's it. I'm going to try it. Next question up here in the front. Third, uh, fourth seat in. 
Gideon Padilla, Filter 360. Kevin, you have, in, in your career, you have played with um, superstars and great combinations like Westbrook, Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry. Um, in my opinion, the, the best chemistry you have developed, it's scary, obviously, because you won two championships. Did you ever cross your mind to go back and play with him at the end of your career? I think I had great chemistry with every point guard. You can ask all of them. I think, to be honest, I played longer with Russ. So I think I probably got more chemistry with him. We came up together uh, as 19-year-olds, you know. So we played eight seasons together, and he knew me inside out. You know, and obviously I had great success with Steph. I don't want to discredit that, but I don't want to also discredit what me and Russ did as well as a – duo, you know. Um, so, yeah, I had great chemistry with every player, like Kyrie as well, Book as well. So, you know, we had success as a team with the Warriors for sure, um, but I felt like I had great chemistry with all of the guys I played with. Again, front right. Hi, Kevin. Um, at this point of in, in your career when you've already accomplished so much, what do you hope to still accomplish, and what do you hope your legacy is once you end up retiring? Uh, I just I just want to keep being available every day, uh, keep adding to what I did already. I mean, I never go into any day trying to accomplish anything. I just put the work in, and whatever happens, happens, you know. <sighs> legacy, I just want to be respected amongst player, people that actually play the game. Um, and players that are aspiring to be where I'm at, I want to be respected by them. Uh, and that's it. David, over here, third row. David Aldridge, The Athletic. Um, Kevin, now that we've kind of seen the 65-game minimum kind of in practice, in actual practice, I just wonder what you think about it as kind of setting a baseline for awards and if that's the way it should be going forward or if there's something else that might work better. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, some guys usually – some guys get injured, man. Some guys just get injured. I think the 65-game rule, I guess, for for the low low management. But I think low management sometimes comes from these organizations too when they force you to sit out of games and then guys may be injured. So, I mean, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, I just want guys healthy and on the court too. I know I guess, I guess that's what the solution is, try to get guys to stay on the court. But – you know, it's just something we just got to deal with. I won't say I love it or I hate it either, but it's just something we got to deal with. All the way back right? Right here, Kevin, um, the back. Uh, Nelson Perez, Hispanic Source Media. Uh, excluding the, the Suns, excluding you guys, uh, what has been the best team you've seen this season and, and the best player? <laughs> Every night, my best player in the my top fives and my goats, like, I feel like every week they change, you know what I'm saying? So I think this last week, right before the break, uh, Minnesota was playing good ball. Uh, Clippers playing great ball. If anything, I'd probably say Clippers and give it to Kawhi. He's the best player I've seen. Fourth row on the right side. Kevin, Bob Kravitz with, the, with Indianapolis Monthly. Steph versus Sabrina, who you got and why, and what do you think – this moment will mean, especially for, for women's basketball? Yeah, my, I got asked this question three times over the last three weeks. My final answer today is I'll go with Steph. Um, and I just think the fact that, you know, you got, you know, the men's and women's game coming together to just put, help celebrate the game of basketball is always good. Sabrina is such a great ambassador for the game, women's game. Just I don't even want to call it the women's for the game of basketball in general. Steph is such a great ambassador. Um, so when we get them both on the floor together to shoot some basketballs, man, it's always going to be fun. So I'm looking forward to it. It's a new event we have, and hopefully we can do more stuff like this with the WNBA as well on All-Star Weekend. So I'm sure they're going to put a show on. Second row over here. Hey, Katie, Carita Parks. Um, later today is the HBCU Classic. As someone who supports HBCUs, how important do you think it is for these schools to have an opportunity to be on a platform such as All-Star? It's huge. It's huge. You know, it's just an opportunity for people around the country to see the type of talent they have at HBCUs. There's a lot of hidden gems there. Uh, great coaching, great talent, you know, up and down the board. So, you know, if we can give them the platform to showcase their talents and skills, then uh, we need to do so. So I'm excited for them. And, you know, hopefully this has become an annual thing and we start to see 
more and more talent come from HBCUs. Back left. Hi, KD. Lachlan Ross from NBA Australia. Uh, you spent a lot of years both international and in the NBA playing against and with Patty Mills. Um, what impact do you think he's had on the international game, Australian basketball and the NBA? Just a, f- a flat-out legend uh, for the Boomers, right? Boomers. Uh, he's been, a, I mean, been a constant for that program since I've been in the league. And, you know, uh, they play with such a toughness, and you know that comes from their best player, which is Patty. And then I have an opportunity to play with Patty for two years in Brooklyn. I see why... Uh, you know, he's become such a legend over there. He's so passionate about where he's from. He's so passionate about just the culture itself and basketball. And, um, and he's an extremely hard worker whose journey should be spoken about with uh, some of the best. So um, he continues to push the game forward, man, and inspire a lot of people. And that's what, that's what I love about this game. We'll take last two right here and then in the back. Brianna Holmes with Radio One. Hey, Kevin. I know you've been doing All-Star Weekend for many years, but what is the thing that you look forward to every year coming back? Um, Just being around the greats, you know. Uh, Even if it's a couple minutes, you can soak up some type of knowledge, you know, from these guys. And, you know, you just get so much energy seeing other greats, other Hall of Famers, other champions in the building with you, you know. So to be in that atmosphere with them is probably the best part. Last one in the back center. Uh, Kevin, uh, what do you think about the season of uh, Victor Wanbanyama and what do you think it can achieve before the end of the season? Thank you. Man, um, that dude can do He can achieve anything he wants in this game. I think he's only getting more comfortable um, as time goes on. It was he 20, 10, three and a half blocks a game, four, two or three assists? It's just it's insane how dominant he's going to be as he gets more comfortable in the game. Luckily, I'm on my way out, so I won't have to deal with it too much. Um, but you just you just see him settling in game after game after game, and it's going to be a joy to watch. Thank you, Kevin.